Swole Benji here. Today I'm going to teach you how to calculate the DPS of your weapons. And with that, I'm going to show you my top three picks, which are all specialized, that will replace the Great Axe when it comes to group solo dungeon farming and possibly solo dungeon farming. Now, here's how to calculate your DPS. See this target here? This is a, what's it called? A damned sarcophagus. All right, and they're located in these little treasure areas on the map in tier five zones. So the reason I picked this target as a test dummy is because it has over 3000 HP and it has about 54% damage reduction with its armor on, which when you attack a player that's in about tier 5.1 or 5.2 with medium level specs or masteries, specialization is what I meant to say, it will do about the same damage. Now, you can see uh, my armor here. Uh, I actually have higher damage reduction because I am on the test realm. It's 70% in full 8-3 with maximum specialization. But a player in like 5-1-5-2 wearing leather, you know, with not max specialization will not have nearly as close to 70. It'll be about 54-55, which is about what this mob has. So let me teach you how to calculate DPS. First off, let's calculate the DPS of our E spell. So we can see here that the tooltip says it does a certain amount of damage. Ignore the tooltip because that is that is just against a naked mob. That doesn't take into account your, your tier, your specialization. I am maximum spec because it is the test realm. This is a max spec DPS test. And let me tell you why I'm testing it with max spec. You don't have to be max spec to test it. But if you get the DPS of a max spec and compare it to the DPS of another weapon for maximum spec then it will still be a higher DPS at lower specs and lower tiers, okay? So if everything is the same, then it will scale just the same. Now, when I say DPS, that stands for damage per second. It's an MMORPG video game term, which means how much damage you're doing per second. So we can see here that the Whirlwind hits every 0.5 seconds for 4.5 seconds. So it's going to hit nine times according to this, but does it really? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It actually hits ten times, okay? So now we're gonna do a little bit of math here. Okay, this thing's just gonna beat on me. We're gonna do some math. You're gonna pull out the calculator. All right, there we go. And I have to do this by by clicking because if it, it'll mute my microphone if I don't. 3225, which is its total health, minus 1385, equals 1840, and we're going to divide that by 4.5 seconds, which is 408.8 .8 damage per second, okay? So, there we go. Now, we can open our little notepad here, all right, get over there, and we can type Great Axe E DPS. 408.8 repeating of course <laughs> of course of course now we can run out of range to reset the mob's health and you'll notice that our w skill is a damage buff it can stack up to 10 times well it's a little hard to get the 10 stack but the damage let's say you did which would be a 40 percent increase so you take your calculator and you can do plus 40 percent which is there it is which will add 163 DPS, which makes it 572.4. So we know that the Axe's E spell can do 572.4, okay? Or you can test it raw. I Like, I have the, what is this, the Royal Sandals boots on. Now, let me tell you, there, there are two boots in the game that increase your DPS. And I don't mean... I don't mean like the little bonus here. Let me, t let me tell you. I don't mean this little thing. I don't mean this little 3.5% damage bonus. No, I'm talking about boots that will actually increase your damage by a large margin. The royal boots here, hold on, let me click it, increases with its ability by 20% and your move speed. Now, the other boot that can contend with that is the cultist sandals, which decreases their resistance by 41. Now, if I run a DPS test the cultist sandals versus the royal sandals, the royal sandals wins, okay? Against a plate armored player, possibly not, but I don't have that to test. But in my current test, the royal sandals is better because it lets you run further. It also lets you do more damage for a longer period of time. Yes, there is the, the leather shoes, the hunter shoes. Uh, where are they at? These guys, which are the hellion shoes. 
increases your damage by 35, but only for 4 seconds. For 4 seconds is not enough time to get your full E spell off. That's why it's not being included. And let's say you have other skills that you want to use. These skills, you know, need to be factored in too. So my choice for the best boot in the game is the Royal Sandals. But let me show you what my best helmet choice is. The Stalker Hood, okay? The Stalker Hood increases your damage by 20%. For instance, I'm going to auto-attack it, do 163. I cast the helmet, I now do 195. But, but, when the opponent is lower than 50% life, you armor shred them by 119. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so we did 193 damage, right? With our auto-attack. So now we're going to press D and armor shred it. Now we do 267. That is a huge increase, and out of all the helmets, this is the highest damage one for our DPS testing. So now that we have the helmet and the boots done, let us talk about armors. Alright, so when soloing group dungeons, I recommend the Hellion Jacket, because it can heal you if you pull like 5 mobs at a time and you get low on health, you press this Hellion Jacket, and it will heal you right up. Okay, right now it's only healing for 59 but it's basically doubled. It doubles this. This would be 118 when I am below 20% life. And it's actually even more if I have my boots active, if I have my armor shred and ar and helm I'm sorry, helmet shred, which is an armor shred and helmet DPS bonus active. If I have this going, it also works. But here's a fun here's a fun fact. And this is you learn this through testing. I learned this on the test realm. You can test it yourself. If you cast your D DPS boosting abilities first and then cast your armor, your armor gets full benefit, right? Now, for the the Hellion jacket, right, I can cast it. I'm doing 59, 59, 59. Now I'm doing 90. I'm still doing 59. See, I'm still doing 59. But if I were to cast my W spell, my boot spell, and my helmet spell before casting my armor, let me tell you, it will be boosted. It will be hugely boosted. Now, once you get higher specs when you're doing group dungeons, I'm not, this video is not really about PvP. It can be. You could apply this to PvP. We might apply it in a future video to PvP. But let me explain. Whenever, whenever you get high enough specs, you don't need Hellion Jacket anymore. You can move on to something that does even more DPS. So let me just demonstrate. I'm going to hit him with W. So there we go. We got our five stacks. Now I'm going to press R. And now it does 68. So there's the proof right there, okay? Now, let me just exit combat so this guy, this statue's health resets. I almost said guy. It's not a guy. And we're going to put on the Spectre Jacket. Now, the Spectre Jacket hits mobs every 0.5 seconds for up to 19.5 se 19 seconds. This, out of all the armors in the entire game, the Spectre Jacket is the highest DPS boosting armor. Now, I, you know Druid Robe? Remember, I've made videos about Druid Robe, how that boosts your DPS as high as possible. But this armor itself is DPS. This, this can be casted, and you can still act on it. It's doing 138 every 0.5 seconds. So that's 138 times 2. Let's do the math. We got the calculator. 138 times 2 is 276 DPS. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't seem like very much. That's like, what, half? That's half of the DPS of this axe spin, right? And you may be thinking, well, axes are great. The great axe, it's literally in the name, is amazing. But no, there, there are better weapons with much higher DPS, okay? So I just want to show you real quick. I just want to show you, before I start talking about the other weapons, here's the, the axe's full combo. Let's see how much damage it does, how much health is remained on the mob here. It's 1,385, okay? And we had to channel that whole time. So I'm going to scroll down and grab ourselves a Life Curse Staff and a Crypt Candle. Now, I know what you're saying, the Crypt Candle, that's already 38% more DPS. Yes, yes it is. It absolutely is. And I'm telling you right now that this one-handed weapon, it's DPS. Let's check it out. How much, how much damage is this mob going to be left with, right? As you can see, we're not doing as much damage. We didn't do as much. Didn't do nearly as much. It's left with 1945. Okay, so that did not beat the Great Axe, clearly, obviously. But did you know that the E on the Enfeebled Blades decreases the damage the mobs deal by 
And also, did you know that Life Curse happens to have an armor shred in the weapon? So now, now, we're going to armor shred it. Okay, I have the wrong ability active. I'm sorry. Let me, uh, I thought I had this all set up correctly. Whoops. Let's, uh, and I'm not reshooting this. This is all one take. This is all one take, and you're going to sit here and listen to this, and you're going to learn, and you're going to be a better player because of it, okay? So, how do we boost the damage of Spectre Jacket? Oh, actually, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's armor shred this guy. So check it out. We're going we're gonna to cast our E, and then we're going to immediately armor shred. And now it's doing 152 each. Look at that. Okay. Now, you may be thinking, but Soul Benji, on, on the Great Axe, you didn't cast W first. W would boost the damage of E, and that it would. That is true. That is absolutely true. However, the damage boost on W would only affect Spectre Jacket if you cast it first, which means you lose DPS during the engage. And that's fine. That's cool. But here's another fun thing. This Crypt Candle boosts your Spectre Jacket by 38%. The Armor Shred boosts your damage of your Spectre Jacket. Like, let's go ahead and let, let's get some damage buffs out. We got our F, we got our D, we're going to press R, we're doing 215, Armor Shred it, now we're doing 254. Alright, so that's pretty damn good. That's 508 DPS just on the armor. And we can still cast this, and we can still cast this. I actually brought the wrong cape. I didn't mean to bring a Thetford cape. I meant to bring a Carleone cape. So we're going to pretend this is a Carleone cape. Because we can cast two of these Qs out. So what I'm saying is that the Life Curse Staff is a very amazing, super good replacement for axes. Now, let me tell you why, okay? When you have the Spectre Jacket, you're going to run at them with the boots, and you're going to turn on your Spectre Jacket. And then while you're doing that, you're going to cast Enfeeble Blades. Now you got two AoEs. Now you're going to Armor Shred, and then you're going to cast two Q spells, which will maximum stack it so they have a dot. They're being hit by the Qs. They're being hit by the E. They're Armor Shredded by the W. And then as soon as they hit 50% life, you press D. And then they're going to be taking 800 plus DPS just from your jacket. They're going to be taking six to 700 plus from your Q. They're going to... Well, I mean, the, the W hits once for 500, so that's 500 DPS. And then your E is going to shred them from three to 400 per tick. And that, that hits harder than Great Axe ever could. And it makes the enemies do 50% less damage, which is kind of sort of the same thing as the passive on the axe, which increases your defense by two seconds. But the E stacks to 10 times and it lasts for three seconds. And your auto attack is an AoE explosion or a mana regeneration or, get this, a movement speed increase. If you want to speed run group solo du group dungeons as a solo, you're going to use the Life Curse Staff, and you will be able to pull large groups of mobs. If you have the roast pork food, all of these things will combine and heal you and keep you fully healed, and the mobs will just tickle you, okay? So for pulling large groups in a group dungeon, the Life Curse Staff is what I recommend. Now, I know this Crypt Candle, is, it's expensive. It's like 50 million silver. And you don't have to have an 8-3. I use a 6-3, which is only 500,000, and it does slightly less slightly less damage, okay? It does like 6 or 8% less damage, whoop de doo <laughs> for only 500,000. You don't have to use an 8-3. I'm just using it in the example. But let's say you want to fight a single target. Like, let, for a single, single target encounter, there is a better combination, and that is the light crossbow. And I actually have a clip that I'm going to show you of how crazy the light crossbow works. It's a little exaggerated, but watch it anyway. The most powerful DPS combo in the game. Poison potion, boots, armor, Q, 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 W, E, Q, Q, use helmet. Then spam Qs and it's dead. That's 13,000 HP gone. So that took 15 seconds in the video. It took 15 seconds. And that mob had how much health? Let's go back. It had 13,545 HP. You want to see it again? The most powerful you DPS go. combo of the game. So, so throws poison a poison potion, boots, potion, activates the boots, armor, activates the armor, Q, Q, presses three Q, Qs, w, then an armor Q. shred. Now, let me talk about light crossbow because we've already seen the video. I don't have to show it again. The light crossbow here. Right here. We got it. Okay. It has a passive that resets your Q's casting ability. It has a W that armor shreds and does damage. So similar to the life curse staff that has an armor shred of 68. 
the light crossbow for a single target because it's not a beam like the like the life curse staff. It is a single target attack that will do nine times ten armor shred if they're at full HP. Which in the video they're not at full HP and that's fine. It's still like fifty to sixty. It's it's about on par with the life curse staff if they're halfway dead. However, the E on the light crossbow can can be can be combined with your W's armor shred and your helmet's armor shred, and it explodes for about 1,600, which is also on par with the Life Curse staff, but because you can spam out three Qs, do two abilities, and then spam out two more Qs with a Care Leon Cape, that's five Q spells from this thing. Look how much damage one of my Qs does, okay? That does 496. You're gonna multiply that by, let's round that up to 500. And it's 2,500, and that's before armor shredding. Like, how bad will this hurt this target if we armor shred them first, okay? So I'm going to get him a little low. I'm going to get him under 50% here. We're going to turn on our buffs, okay? We're going to hit our, our boots. We're going to hit our, our helmet. We're going to hit the W and then the Q. That is 967. So <laughs> by the time you're shooting it with two to three more Qs, you're doing 967 damage per Q. While your armor burns them, while your exploding shot not only hits them with the impact of the mine, but the also the explosion of the mine. All right, the light crossbow wins my choice to replace the great axe if you're dealing with smaller pools or single targets. All right, this is what I personally use on my character on live servers: is the light crossbow, the crypt candle, soccer hood, specter jacket, royal sandals, and I use a care Leon cape. I just use a four point one. Because the 8.3 saves you 8 seconds cooldown. Who cares about 8 seconds? I don't. I ain't paying millions for 8 extra seconds every other pull. It's already a 38 second cooldown. Who cares? And like I said, you could use the Hellion Jacket because you have to level this thing up anyway. You need very high specs for your Spectre Jacket to do very good DPS. That's just how it works. But this also suffers from a problem. And that is that it requires a Crypt Candle. And some people don't like the Crypt Candle, but there's one more. There's one more item that I'm going to recommend you that is just as powerful. Now, let me, let me explain just real quick. The Life Curse Staff versus the Light Crossbow. The Light Crossbow will kill a single target with 10,000 HP two seconds faster than the Life Curse Staff. Only two seconds. Just two seconds. Anything with more HP, it... It's about four to five seconds. Like that 13,000 health mob clip that I just showed you, that would take about four to five more seconds with the Life Curse Staff, but the Life Curse Staff user will take far less damage from the mob or mobs, depending on how many there are, because of their E ability. So I still think that the Life Curse Staff is the number one group solo, like group dungeon, group dungeon clearing build if you're a solo. If you are just clearing regular dungeons, which is what I do, I do regular tier 5 dungeons. The light crossbow, you can just throw an E on, onto a pack of mobs and they all die. You can spam out your Qs and they all die immediately. With the life curse staff, you have to throw out your sickle and then dot the enemies and then they'll follow you a bit and then they'll eventually wither and die. You can shoot your laser beam, that'll kill some of them. Your E will kill some of them over 5 or 4 or 5 seconds. It's about the same clear speed as a great axe, okay? But there's one more item. There's one more item I'm going to show you, and this is the budget build. And let me let me explain this item. It's the the Spirit Hunter. Okay, so the Spirit Hunter is the same clear speed and the same damage as the Life Curse Staff. It costs way less, but it doesn't have the defensive E option. Okay. Now the cool thing about the Life, or I'm sorry, the, the Spirit Hunter is its E ability is an armor shred. Now. You'll notice that our build has, all of our choices have Armor Shred, and because Armor Shred is how we get our Spectre Jacket to do so much damn damage. Look, I'm doing 138. Now I hit him with the E, and I'm doing 153. And it might die from the dots. So I'm gonna run away, because <laughs> I, I, I want it healed. Now, also another thing that you'll notice is all three weapons have an AoE Q ability. Now, the Life Curse Staff is being the slowest AoE, but the, one of the strongest over time. The Light Crossbow being an instant damage and spammable. And the Spirit Hunter, now it has the, the weakest of the Q abilities. It only hits 327, and it has kind of a short cooldown, 3 seconds. You can kind of spam it out. But here's the cool thing about Spirit Hunter that the other weapons don't have. It has insane auto attack damage. Look at this, 374 auto attack damage. Okay, the Light Crossbow is going to auto attack for about 74. 
That means a light crossbow has to auto attack five to six times for every one auto attack that the spirit hunter has. All right. Also, the spirit hunter has an ability that roots it into the ground and makes you channel. Okay. So that kind of sucks. The other weapons don't have that where you're stuck in, 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 you know, stuck using an ability for that long. However, everything it works so damn good in group group dungeons. Okay. You press your your F. You hit your R. You throw your E out, you hit Q, and then you press W, and you're you're doing you're stacking so much damage so fast on one target, they melt. Now the only downside to Spirit Hunter is that you either have to wait for your W to finish casting, and then armor shred, or you have to armor shred and then cast your W. And your W has a very short cooldown. Like between rooms, you're going to be getting this thing back. So my personal choice is the light crossbow because I'm the crossbow guy. I always use crossbows. It has the highest and fastest clearing single target damage. If you're doing a dungeon and it's a small pool, the light crossbow will win in terms of speed. However, it's it's the squishiest. The light crossbow is the squishiest weapon to use, okay? And then you have the life curse staff combined with uh, Crypt Candle. Crypt Candle being the highest DPS in our DPS test, all right? You use the E, and that makes the enemies do almost no damage. You have an armor shred on a pretty damn short cooldown, and with Carolyon Cape, you can get max stacks on your curses. And this thing, every time the sickle hits them, it does a good chunk of damage. Like, just hitting an object, dot, it, it, it not only instantly dots it, it also it has an impact damage. So over time, the Life Curse Staff will out-DPS the others. Like, say you had a mob with 100,000 HP, right? The Life Curse Staff would kill it first, over the Spirit Hunter and over the Light Crossbow. If the target has 15,000 health, the Light Crossbow will definitely win. The Spirit Hunter can't beat the Life Curse Staff at all, but it is the cheaper and dumbed down easier, like, option, okay? It's also really good for PvP. Like, Life Curse Staff, you're, you're not going to be good at PvP in it. The Light Crossbow, it's good in 1v1 Corrupt Dungeons, but if you want to do Faction Warfare, then the Spirit Hunter is the, is the choice for you, because you throw this sucker, and I had, a, I had a clip lined up for this video, but my Discord got deleted, uh, because of Redditors, where, like, a guy just runs into a group of, like, 20 dudes, he throws his E at them, and they just melt. They just immediately die. They take, like, 3,000 health in half a second. And it's it's amazing and fun to watch. But I don't have that clip anymore, and I don't remember where it's at. I don't have an internet history thing turned on on my browsers, so I can't go dig through and get it. It's literally gone forever. So, to sum up this video, I taught you how to calculate DPS on weapons, so you can hop on the test realm and check all the DPS you want. Let's say you, you know, you didn't have very high specs. You can go to the little crafting benches on the test realm and get a free 4.2 weapon. And then you can adjust your specs on the test realm because you have infinite money and infinite max specs. You can adjust these down to whatever points you want. And then you can record your DPS. But let me just show you something else real quick. Hold on. Uh, let me just... Uh Make sure I'm recording this correctly. And I'm going to pull up a Word document where I've already done that. I've already done all the legwork for you, okay? Uh, let me just find it here because I did a lot of uh, a lot of testing, a whole lot of it. All right, so I think I've got it ready. And this is this is my my findings. At first, I tested attack speed, so I tested like um, hunter jacket, bow. Um, I I did all this fun stuff with different specs, different levels of specs, different grades of weapons. All right, and so like for the regular bow, the highest DPS I can get when you combine the explosive shot, I believe, was 968 DPS, which is like double that of a great axe, right? Uh, and then I tried Whispering Bow, I tried all the different combinations with Whispering Bow to see if it was better than the regular bow, and I came up with 702 DPS as the highest I could get for a Whispering Bow. Then I, uh, I tried Trinity Spear's Auto Attack build, and it was 822 DPS. You had a Morgana Cape, it boosts it to 925, right? Uh, Forge Hammers, I tried a Forge Hammer Auto Attack build, and I managed to get 704 DPS out of it, which is not bad. I tried a heavy crossbow auto attack build and got 264 DPS. Ouch. That's just with auto attacks. I also discovered a bug with Forge Hammers that if you activate the E and mount up, you can ride through a crowd and slow everyone down, and if you combine it with Guardian Armor, you can pretty much stop people in their tracks. They literally can't move because they're being slowed by 100%. It's pretty cheesy. 
And then I tried curse staff with max staff, uh, max stats. I've I tried the DPSing with the death curse, and I could get about with armor shred 819 DPS on the curse staff. It's still losing to bow. Then I tried the bolt casters E, which is 933 DPS. Hey, look at that! If you W into E, it's 1101. You you can see like you could just pause the video and read this like crossbows E with cleric cow the casting time and, and the armor shreds I'm getting pretty damn high DPS like 1,372 1,493 if you uh, combine it with a beef stew uh, and then if you had masterpiece crossbow you can get 1,638 DPS that's pretty amazing good outstanding quality is 1,522. And on the test realm, you can go to the, the blacksmith with your infinite money and sit there and, and try to upgrade your weapon to Masterpiece all you want, right? And then uh, I, uh, I combined, uh, you know, Furious Weapon Passive Beef Stew, Qs on the ground to build Furious Stacks, and then a full combo with Armor Shred and, and Weapon Boosting Abilities with the Crossbow. Got 2,017 DPS. But with Outstanding, and then with Masterpieces, 2,212. That's the highest DPS I could get on a weapon, was the Crossbow, 2,212. Now, is the Crossbow uh, viable for group soloing dungeons? No, it's not, because it's single target. But you could apply 2,212 DPS against a player, and let's say the player's in full H3, so that's 70% damage reduction. You would do 30% uh, less than this, which would be 600 less damage. That's 1,300 DPS. So 1,300 DPS would kill my current character in full 8-3 in 3 seconds. That's how fast you would survive against a, a crossbow. Obviously with cooldowns, it's not the case. And with healing and defensives, that's not the case either. So that's why I don't really theorycraft it for PvP. This is purely for, for PvE, okay? And then I tried like 4.1 max spec crossbow with royal hood and sandals and all that fun stuff. I got 1,040 DPS, which is really nice for a 4.1 set. Now, here's the cool stuff. I compared all the different ways to build and play Frost Staffs, right? And here's the cool, sh the cool stuff. Frost Staff, uh, <laughs> oh wait, well that's Fire Staff. I found that Frost Bolt was the highest DPS thing to use. And that with every, all the best stuff, like with a Morgana Cape and a, and, a, and a Beef Stew, you can get 1,268. That's pretty dang good for a, 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 a staff that can catch mounted players and dismount them. Do you know any mounts that have 2,400 health? Well, they would die in two seconds to this. Two seconds. That's all it takes to dismount a 2,400 HP mount. But you know what this Tier 8 horse has? It has 949 health. So that means with this DPS... You could dismount a horse player in full tier 8 in, uh, in like a second, basically. <laughs> Fire Staff happened to be way higher DPS than the Frost Staff at 1,909. But the Fire Staff doesn't have a way to catch players. If you were to just stand next to someone and spam spells with a very low latency, and I have about 80 ping right now, uh, so I have low latency thanks to uh, Best Buy's internet. I can I can pump out 1,909 DPS with a Fire Staff. Obviously 8.3 and obviously max spec. So here I'm trying all the different Fire Spells, and I learned that if you have max spec and you have the right gear, your W spell is a DPS loss, and your E spell can be a DPS loss, right? Like, the Fire, the fire uh, Bolt, or is it Fire Explosion? I have it here somewhere, but it, it's like... I don't know. It's here. You can pause the video. You can read my little text box. It's whatever. I just realized that my watermark is kind of in the way, so I'm going to scoot it over there for you. There you go. I also tested Druidic Staff, which is my favorite build because it has two heals, and it's all, like the most I could get out of it was 433 DPS. But you have to use a beef stew, and I don't really recommend that. I just do it. This is with no food, which is 391 DPS. 391 DPS, it's like half as much as a bow, but you have two heals. You have the Merc Jacket and the, the healing from the staff itself. So, and then here's where I did Spirit Hunter, and I, I tested, um, you know, all cloth armor, beef stew, just the abilities. Then I tried it with the Royal Sandals, Royal Hood DPS. Um, so if you combined, what, here's what I came up with. If you're being hit by all of the Spirit Hunter's abilities, you're taking 2,174 DPS. And then if you combine it with the Spectre Jacket, you're taking another 800. So it's like 2,000... 974 it's almost 3000 damage per second when you have the full combo rolling okay and then here's where i, I tested specter jacket dps which is 276 i believe at the start of the video that's what we came up with and then with royal hood royal sandals spirit hunters e royal sandals cultist sandals stalker hood without shred royal hood 
with a crypt candle after the crossbow's armor shred. You can see it just keeps going up. Here's the highest that I got it. If I armor shred someone with a crossbow at 100% HP with the W and then with the crypt candle, royal sandals active, and then I stalker helmet shred them, I'm doing 804 damage per second with just the armor. That's nearly stronger than the bow, right? The bow was 770 something. So just your armor, just your armor's fire ability is doing more DPS to a mob than the bow, one of the higher DPS essential weapons in the game, okay? Also, real quick, to calculate auto attack damage, you just look here on your character sheet, you go to your attack speed, uh, and you see how many attacks per second you're doing, and you just auto attack them, and then that's how you, uh, how you check it. So real quick, remember when I said that Spirit Hunter had a really high auto attack damage? So let's check the DPS on that real quick, okay? So we're going to get two. We got our three stacks here. And these aren't really armored opponents. These are jars. 374. So we're going to take 374. And then we're going to divide it and make sure my mic isn't turned off by 0.8. Actually, we multiply. Sorry. 376 times 0.8. And that is 300.8 DPS auto attack. That's really, really freaking good, okay? Which I didn't factor in. Not, not that one. I didn't factor in here. But, like, as you can see, with the Spirit Hunter full combo, the armor is doing 500. And then I did the, the Great Axe DPS. And I, and then I tested a one-handed dagger DPS. I tested, like, crossbow DPS. The battle axe, the one-handed battle axe. It was terrible. The broad swords DPS, the clarinet blade, the hammers, the maces, the life curse staff. You, you can see... This is what I do. I spent literal days on this, getting all these DPS numbers, and this is how I came up with the fact that Life Curse Staff was pretty damn good. Okay? So, and then I went into a group dungeon on the test realm and just tested which is the fastest, which is the easiest to pull off, and which is the one I'm most comfortable with, right? Oh, and then I forgot in my fishing video that I released a while back. This was the 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 the, the fishing costs. So here's the silver cost if you buy fish, right up right up top here. And then this is the fame you get if you eat the fish. And then this is the silver cost per fame gained. So you can see if you eat striped carp, you're getting the best bang for your buck, but it's really slow. But if you eat sturgeon, you're paying a, a good amount, not as much as tuna, obviously. You're not paying as much as tuna. But you are paying more than a striped carp. So you can sit there and eat a whole bunch of striped carp and save yourself eight silver, basically, per fame point. And you need hundreds of thousands of fame uh, to max out your fishing if you choose to eat fish to max that out. I don't recommend fishing ever, by the way. But if you did, you would want to eat the striped carp and a lot of them because that would save you tons and tons of silver. Anyway, that that's, that's the video. I know it's kind of a long one, but I hope you... I hope you can go onto the test realm with this math, this knowledge, this power, and you can test out your builds. Stop asking me in the comments, can, can I solo a group dungeon with daggers? Bro, get on the test realm and try it out. Math it out. See if you can do it. Just go to the little guy. I can show you right now. You go to town and you go to the little cheat spots and you can buy the gear. You don't actually have to buy the gear. It's free. It's like a crafting bench that generates any weapon you want in the game. And you can just ride out to a group dungeon because there's no one on the test realm to gank you or to, to prohibit your progress. And you can test and see if it works for you. And that's how you theory craft. I literally just solved the game's DPS question. What is the highest DPS combination of gear in the game? It's the light crossbow with Crypt Candle. And uh, I'm sure that the, the hardcore expedition chads... Those guys could tell you it's the same combination of gear. They might recommend a different helmet for longer battles, but this, for me, for killing like a 15,000 HP mob, this works just fine. So you go here to this bench, and you can just click a dagger, click tier 3, and boom. You get one in your inventory, and then you can put it on, and you can give it some skills. You can go to these little stones up here, and you can get, what is that, elite faction mount. Now I have a salamander, wow. Uh, here's reputation, you know, so you can enter towns. Here's here's a million silver. Look at my silver just go up. A lot of people, they watch my videos and they ask, why do you have billions of silver? Because I'm on the test realm. And you click here and you, you go unlock destiny board. You click yes. Now you go to your destiny board. It's all 100. You can click one and you can move it down to one. There you go. And now you get those fame credits back. So you, you can move it back up to 100 if you want. You could just do this over and over and over again. And if you can't afford it, then you go and you add more silver. 
and then you re-unlock the whole destiny board, and there you go. That's how you test the numbers, that's how you test the DPS, that's how you test anything and everything in the game without wasting months and years actually grinding for it. And look at these other benches. These are tier, there's tier six, there's tier seven, there's tier five. Let's say you can only afford a 5-2 dagger. Can a 5-2 dagger do group dungeons? I don't know. Get on the test room, put one on and tell me. Tell me in the comments if it can or not. Don't expect me to do all the work for you or do all the math for you. Here's the, here's the tier fours. Can a tier four, how much damage does an ironclad tier four one staff do? I don't know. Let's go check. With maximum spec, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to do a live test. Okay. I don't know why I haven't ended the video, but we're going to do a live test right now. I don't, I don't know how much damage this does. I haven't tested it because I don't like staffs. I don't ever plan to use this fucking thing, but maybe you do. Maybe you're, you're a big Ninja Turtles fan. You like the Ninja Turtle that uses the, the staff. I don't know what his name is. I didn't really watch Ninja Turtles. Okay. I know what they are, but I wasn't really that big of a fan because it's kind of a furry thing. Here's our test subject. We'll fight this tier. Hello. I can't target him. This is a tier five mob. He has about 50% armor. And let's see, our auto attack, flat 4, 61 damage, RQ does 168, okay, we got those numbers, we got 61 and 168, we're going to copy those, or you can put them on a notepad, you can open up your little notepad, and put, bam, that's our numbers, right, now we're going to go, and we're going to open this up, and we are going to, we're just going to crank all this stuff down, okay, we're going to crank it down, so we can see how much a brand new player would do. How much would a brand new player? How, how hard would they hit with the ironclad staff? Okay, let's find out. There we go. We're, we're all one spec. I mean, mastery is going to be hundred. Whatever. Who cares? I'm going to unequip it, reequip it, dismount, and let's go. Let's go hit them again. And we're going to get our numbers. Dang it, we're going to get our numbers. Okay, so we auto attack for 47, and we Q for 137, 131, 47, and 131. You can go to your combat log on your chat. You see your chat. You can scroll up, and you can see it there, too, if you're not fast enough with your eyeballs. So 39 and 131. Now we go here, and then we compare 39, 39 and 131. Okay? So that means we did, uh, what, 22 damage, and that's uh, 30, 37 damage. So, at absolute maximum specs with tier 4 flat ironclad staff, I'm a, I'm, this guy's cutting me, it's kind of annoying. We can see that our auto attack increased by 22 hole damage and our Q increased by 37 damage. So how much if we just level up once? We're going to go to ironclad staff and we're going to put one little level in it. There you go, it's been leveled one time. Unequip it, re-equip it to refresh because the game is, you know, it, it's poorly coded. And... Now we're going to hit them again, and we're going to see how much more we do, okay? So now we bonk them, that's still 47, and still 131. So we didn't even increase our damage with those skills at all. Not one bit. So we're going to do nine more. And you see where I'm getting with this? Like, okay, we're level 10 now. Now we're level 10, and we're going to fucking unequip and re-equip it. There you go. And now we can see if we do more than 37. We do 48. Oh, wait. No, we did 47. Now we're doing 48. And our Q does 33. So that would be... Uh, wait, 39. Yeah, we went 39. Now we went 48. And then... How much was the Q? 133. So we... <laughs> 10 levels increased this by 2 damage. And increased this one by 8 damage? So... You just have to do the math. You just have to play with it and see what you like. And if it's worth maximum specking into. And then in the next video, I'm going to get on the live servers... And I'm maxing out my crossbows because I've got 69 million combat fame on the live. Anyway, that's the video. That's how to calculate your DPS. That's how to test DPS. You can get on the test server and you could you could try to find a combination of items that beats or is better than what I have. I know you're going to say it right now that you think that the expert, the one-handed dagger in full 8-3 with maximal specs does the most DPS. But like I already, I already pulled up, I already showed you that that is not the case. The highest DPS I could get on daggers, real quick. Let me just uh, let me let me pull that up one more time for you, just because I know someone's gonna comment, and I'm gonna save your butt from embarrassment here. All right, let me just find it. It it's on here somewhere. Okay, uh, let me scoot this over so the watermark isn't in the way. Let's see. Yeah, I, I tested it with Spectre Jacket. 
So here's the Q, the Q1 spell Q2. That would be uh, like th this is Q1, the Sunder Armor. Q2 is the Deadly Swipe. Obviously, Q3 doesn't do damage. The, the W spells W's 1, 3, and 5, which, you know, W5 is Chain Slash. W1 is the Ninja Star throwing, throwing Blade spell, etc. And the E, the e was only 504 DPS. And I, I also tested this um, Torch versus Crypt Candle, and Torch was the higher DPS one. I don't know if I saved that on here, but you get the point, okay? That, that's how you test your DPS. You get on here, and you mess around with the specs, and you mess around with the gear quality. You can even raise this higher quality so that it's Masterpiece or Good or Great or Outstanding, uh, or etc. You just got to get on here and test it out, and then see what you like, see what's comfortable, and see what works for what you're trying to do. Also, at the same time, because it's the test realm, you can go anywhere. You can go to the Black Zone. There ain't nobody on this server. There is no one here. Look at look at how many people are in, in Thetford right now. There's just me. Just one person. Just me. That's it. You can click this, and you can have no guild, join, leave, create, cooldown if you want to mess around with guild stuff. This is how you learn the game extremely quickly, faster than anyone else. This is how you test weapons and DPS and test builds so that you know what works with what. Like, let's say you want to go to Astolat and you want to solo some of the mobs here. Well, you would get a whole bunch of different gear sets from these guys here. You just get a bunch of gear sets with whatever you're comfortable with buying in the actual server. Run out to Astolat and see if you can kill anything. And there you go. Now you have your data. That's how you can formulate a nice build and you can be productive, and you don't have to second guess yourself or level up a spec that you think is good but it might suck. Like there's people that max their specs in in these damn staffs. And as we can, as we saw, for if you wanted to use a flat four staff, if that's your dream, your dream is to maximize the damage you do with an ironclad flat four staff. Too cheap to buy a 4.1, are you? Is it is it worth the grind? Is it worth the time to maximize an entire tree of spec? is about 150 million silver into an 8.3 satchel and hours and hours and hours of group dungeon solo grinding. Or you can maximize one spec with 60 million silver worth of Tomes of Insight. So that's 60, 120, 240, um, that'd be 360 million if you did it that way, or about 120 million with the satchel method and hours and hours of grinding. It's up to you. It's your money. It's your free time. You do what you want. That's the video. I'm done explaining this stuff. I'm Soul Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole, and I'll see you in the next one. And return your shopping cards.